Roddy Kincaid Weeks went to Chelsea Police Station on the same mission. He, her description and details of the, her car were circulated immediately and the car was checked on the police computer to see if it had been stopped or seen anywhere. The police quickly established that Jenny was not the sort of girl to drop into a pub or a club on her own and that if her car had broken down or if she had unexpectedly met friends she would have telephoned Roddy. A stable, happy girl, Janie would not have disappeared of her own volition, but she was the heiress to a considerable fortune. Her stepfather was chairman of British Petroleum in Sydney, and the possibility, possibility that she had been kidnapped occurred immediately to her family and the police alike. Through a long, anxious weekend, they waited for a ransom demand. It never came. When she left the Sampson's flat at 103 Clifton Hill at 8.40 p.m., she was wearing jeans tucked into her Cossack boots a man's check shirt over a thin fawn polar neck sweater and a thick white cardigan with a reindeer motif. Into her bag, red satchel bag, she had put 40 pounds, some clean underwear and a black sweater with a vivid red polar neck and bright green cuffs. She also added a tapestry she was working on along with some balls of coloured wool. Detective Inspector Roger Lewis of St. John's Wood CID was put in charge of investigating Jenny's disappearance. By Monday he was already in serious doubt that she would ever be seen alive and the following day Tuesday 8th of February there was a breakthrough in the case that seemed to confirm his worst fears. Jenny's dark blue mini was found in Elgin Crescent Notting Hill. It was parked on a yellow line and there were two parking tickets on the windscreen one dated 7th February at 11.45 a.m. the other Tuesday 8th February at 12 noon when Jenny had left home on Friday night her car had been clean and shiny. A week earlier she had decided to sell it and had cleaned and polished it ready for potential buyers. She had placed an advers advertisement in the London Evening Standard for four consecutive days and had put a large for sale notice in the rear window, but when it was not found. But when it was found, the car was so covered in mud that several witnesses remembered seeing it as early as 1.10 a.m. on Saturday, barely five hours after Jenny had disappeared. The for sale notice was still clearly displayed in the rear window. Inside the car were Jenny's Cossack boots and a red shoulder bag, the 40 pound in cash and a National Westminster check cards card were missing as were her change of clothing, tapestry and the balls of wool. In her red handbag was a supermarket receipt and a receipt for £2.40 for petrol she had bought on Friday and an important clue for the police. This showed that she had topped up 7.5 gallon 34 petrol tank with 3 gallons of 4 star petrol at self-service garage in Bayswater and enabled the police to make a rough assessment of how far the car could have been driven given the amount of petrol left in the tank. Now here it doesn't say the time. In a 2.40 receipt it doesn't say what time this is. Given the amount of petrol left in the tank it looked as if though the Mini could have travelled about 75 miles. Chief Superintendent Henry Mooney of Scotland Yard's murder squad was called in to oversee the investigation. One took a, one look at the interior of the car. He knew that something outlandish, as he put it, had happened. There were two parallel slash marks in the sunroof and a further forensic analysis revealed that a tremendous struggle had taken place inside the car. It had been driven deep into the country since the muds since the mud splashed on the bodywork and embedded the tyres showed traces of chalk and flint, also of oak and beech leaves. Further investigation of the tyres suggested that the car had been actually struck, stuck in a mud at some time and fibres found in the tyres indicated that Jenny's tapestry might have been propped under the wheels to give leverage. When analysis of the soil on the car showed it could have been driven to Oxfordshire, Hertfordshire, Wiltshire, Surrey, police from all those co countries were alerted. The supermarket receipt was traced to Europa Foods in Queensway, where the till operator remembered Jenny because she looked like a film star or a model, and a search of the vicinity of Queensway revealed the food that matched the receipt, receipt smoked trout, yogurt, tomatoes and chicory at cost of three or five scattered around various back gardens. Chief Superintendent Mooney also launched a direct appeal to the public. A full description of the clothes and jewellery Jenny was last wearing was issued. Her jewellery included a gold Woodstock charm, a present from Roddy that was worn, a chain given to her by her mother. A Gucci digital watch on a grey leather wristband, a heavy gold bangle on a traditional three-part gold Russian wedding ring. Soil samples were examined by mineral mineralogists from ICI, Macro paleontologists from London University and other experts in an attempt to discover the exact spot where Jenny might be found. 